going on guys welcome back to another swift video in today's video we're going to be looking at how you can use google's components the ones that they use in their apps like youtube and gmail in your apps so specifically their design language and their components are called material design and if we go ahead and hit this button here you'll see that this alert looks a lot like the alert that you see in the youtube app or in the gmail app and you can see it's also fully dark mode supported. We're in dark mode right now. And same thing for this action sheet. Not the Apple standard one, it is the Google one and you can actually swipe it up and down too and you get all of this uh, functionality, the icons, uh, title, subtitle, all this stuff out of the box. So basically we're gonna look at how to put our apps together to look like Google's apps with really polished components uh, using their material design library. So that said, if you haven't smashed that like button already while I was blabbering on in the beginning of this video, make sure to do so for that YouTube algorithm. Get Xcode ready, get excited, and let's jump right in. Quick pause before we get into the video. If you haven't seen it already, I am hard at work putting together iosacademy.io, a community where all of us iOS engineers can come together, learn how to build some of the top apps like Facebook, YouTube and Instagram, in addition to interview prep to land some of these iOS roles at top tech companies. So if you're interested in the free and premium content to come, head on over to iosacademy.io and enter your email address in the waitlist form and you will be notified as content becomes available. That said, let's get into the video. All right, so let's jump right in by creating a new Xcode project. We're going to stick with a single view application template and let's call this project my material design app and I'm going to save it to my desktop. And the very first thing we want to do is actually head on over to our browser and go to this website, which is material.io slash uh, develop slash iOS. So like I briefly mentioned in the beginning of this video, material design is a design language at Google that they've kind of perfected over several years. And they've created all these libraries for iOS, Android uh, websites, where there's a, a collection of components that are consistent to their design guidelines. They've invested a lot of work in making sure is everything is accessible, dark mode supportive, works in landscape, iPad, iPhone, and of course, uh, Google uses this library and these principles in all of their apps. So if you ever use the YouTube app on iOS or any of the Android apps or any of Google's websites, Google search, Gmail, which uh, you know I'm sure every single person watching this video has, you have seen these uh, components. So we're gonna demo two of the components, but let's actually go through a few of them just to look at the docs um, so you guys can see what's available to you. So if you open up components over here, you can see there's an alphabetical list of all the things that are available. There's things like action sheet. And if we click on this, you'll see a preview, both portrait and landscape. And this is the same action sheet you'll find in like the Gmail app or the YouTube app. Um, what else is cool in here? I really like the way their buttons look. They're it's pretty standard buttons, but they're polished with their borders and shadows and you get a variety of uh, kind of looks and feels for icons or with text. I'm also a big fan of cards, if I can find them. So Google uses these cards all over the place. I think this is how Google search results look today, unless they've updated it again, where you have your title, a subtitle, some content, uh, and then some action buttons, and you have a really nice container. Now under the hood, this is all just a UI view and you can build it all yourself but obviously using the library speeds up your development quite a bit and it makes sure that everything is very tested, bug-free and consistent. Let's see what else is cool in here. So there's cards, uh, chips, dialogues, feature highlights are pretty nifty. So you've probably seen this on websites. Whenever Google launches something new, they'll uh, you know do this little circular thing where it kind of highlights the, the actual feature with a description. Uh, but anyways, let's actually look at we're going to be looking at action sheets and dialogues since they're the most common components that people like to use and they're all over the place in apps. So dialogues are basically this thing and you're almost, I'm almost positive every one of you has seen this in the YouTube app uh, or Gmail. 
So let's get started uh, over here in Xcode by actually closing the project with the command W. And we're going to want to open up Terminal. And we're going to CD into our project. And we're going to bring all of these things in via CocoaPod. So you're going to do a pod init. And then once that returns, do an open pod file. And you're able to bring in each of these components uh, as a one-off instead of bringing in the entire library. And the reason is, is the library, of course, is very large and it increases your app size. So if you scroll down and you find the installation, you'll see the CocoaPod is material design components and then slash the thing you're bringing in. So we're going to copy that pod and we're going to paste it right here and we'll copy and paste it again. And the other one we're going to want to bring in is action sheets. And I think it's capitalized like that. Let's double check. So let's come on over here and click on action sheets. Scroll down past all the documentation that people love to not read. And we have action sheets singular. And what's cool is uh, it actually even tells you like how to like implement all of this stuff. Documentation aside, it gives you basically all the code you need. So we're going to actually copy it straight up from here. So I'm going to copy the import statement that we're going to use in a second. So close up a uh, text edit over here and run pod install. And I've actually personally used both of these uh, components in a lot of my own apps and they look really nice. They're really clean and they give you a little bit of a differentiating factor from the typical system alerts. Now, I mean, design is very subjective, but I think it's interesting to see that this is available to you all. So now that it has installed, we can run open the project name.xc workspace. And let's go ahead and expand our Xcode window to give ourselves a little more room to work. Let's open up this project. And let me select a simulator. So we've got the 11 open. So we're going to stick with that. Let's paste in that import. And before we actually hit run, try to compile, make sure it works after installation, let's go ahead and just add uh, two buttons to our screen. And we press the first one, we're gonna show the uh, dialog, AKA alert. Uh, and the second one will show the action sheet. So go ahead and override view did layout subviews, call super for that function. And we're gonna show a button. So the first button is simply gonna be standard UI button, the CG rect x y width and height so let's go ahead and put these on new lines this will be 220 50 100 and we're going to make this centered horizontally so let's copy the width and we're going to say this is view dot frame size width minus the button width divided by two let's also give this a title and this is going to be alert for normal. Let's also give it a background color. Uh, let's go with system green. Let's add it to our screen. And then most importantly, we also want two functions that will get triggered when we tap on each button. So first one's going to be did tap alert. And the next one is going to be did tap action sheet let's go ahead and add those targets so the first button is going to be add target self action is did tap alert and this is going to be touch up inside and now we can be lazy and copy and paste this button right below it go ahead and highlight and hit Control i to fix that indentation and let's change the button name to sheet button change up all of these change this to be system blue and this is going to be action sheet let's do uh, for this 200 so the buttons don't overlap and did tap action sheet so go ahead and hit command r to build and run and we should have our app compiling and our two buttons showing up here and there it goes and do we have our buttons? Give it a second while it decides to be slow. There they are. Okay, cool. So we've got our green button and our blue button. Right now, obviously, they don't do anything. So the first one that we had open here, I think, was the action sheet. So it shows you usage, and you can actually literally copy and paste this. 
Um, this shows you how to set it up in a basic way and there's a lot of customization you can do and it kind of tells you the different styles it has, how to support accessibility, customization, all that good stuff. But uh, I'll let you guys read that on your own time to customize it to your own desire. But for the action sheet, we're going to paste that stuff in here. And Google actually surprisingly has a typo in this. They forgot the parentheses for the closing of the print. And they also forgot the parameter that comes in. So do the underscore in since we don't care about the parameter. I'm also going to line break this on a new line like that. And actually, if you just hit command B, uh, this should be good to go. Looks like we have an error somewhere in here. So let's find it. So let's see, we have, oh, it's because I put the line break after the P. So go ahead and hit Command B now. And their code for the most part is uh, functional, but we're going to look at some customization. So if you go ahead and hit this, you'll get the action sheet showing up. You'll see no images actually show up because it's trying to use images that are supposedly in our XE assets. Now those don't exist, so I'm going to uh, change this to be a system symbol. And we're going to stick with a house. And then this one is going to be a system symbol as well for gear. And this one will be settings. So if you hit Command R again, you'll see that we now should have our uh, icons. We've got a title or label as well as our uh, buttons in the actual sheet. And we tap on them, we get the respective print statement out. So pretty simple to set this guy up. So we'll look at a little basic customization in a second after we bring in the alert. Let me close up that console and let's go find the alert documentation uh, that they call a dialog. So we're going to go to dialogs and let's see, let's come down here and try to find what we need. So we're going to want an import and I think I already know what the import is, so I will skip that. And let's see, typical user alert. This is what we want. So we can drag or the copy all of this jazz. Come on over here and paste it in here. And let's see, do they have any issues in their code here? Looks like they need to fix this completion. That can be nil. And we got to pass in a title and a message. So let's say you have an alert of, um, let's say this is a logout alert. So let's see, logout. Are you sure you would like to log out? And we are going to do two buttons on here. So right now we just have this one and instead of assigning it to, uh, actually, no, we can do it like this. So instead of uh, having the one, we want two. This one is going to be cancel, log out. And I think we can also specify a type on here. So if we close this and reopen the constructor, uh, there's title, oh, emphasis, that's what they call it. So if we put in another parameter in here for emphasis, there's a couple types, there's low, medium, and high, and it controls the bolding, uh, or how bold, rather, uh, the thing shows up as. So I'll make this one that, so it should be slightly more bold. And I think that's all we really need. So go ahead and hit Command R. We have that warning because we're not using the action. And let's go ahead and hit this button, and you'll see our super nifty looking uh, alert here. So we have cancel, but where's the other one? Oh, right. We need to actually add the action. So let's do that. And this is action two. Let me make this one action one. So we have some parity. Go ahead and hit command R. And I believe the order should be correct since we added cancel first and delete second or log out. So looks like I'm mistaken. It goes right to left. Whoops, let's actually add this one first and then action one and logout will be on the right, like so. And whenever we tap any of these, of course we come into the closure and we get our print statement. So that's how you can do an action sheet and uh, an alert. And what's pretty cool is like, you get a bunch of customization, uh, things like landscape and all that jazz works, but <laughs> don't mind the double buttons because I put all this code in viewed layout. But what we're going to look at real fast for some basic customization that most people would like to do is dark mode. So you'll notice out of the box, if we tap on this, it's actually white and it's not dark mode supportive. So like what gives? And same thing for the alert. 
So what you can actually do, um, and you can definitely read the docs and figure this out, but I'll just illustrate it here, is you can specify all the colors for all this stuff and like the corner radius, and you can customize basically every little nitty gritty detail about this. So we're gonna say the background color for the action sheet is system background. We're gonna say the title text color is label. We're gonna say the message text color is secondary label. And we're going to say there's a tint color on here as well is label. And these label and system label things, these are all semantic colors if you're not familiar. So they are adaptive to both dark mode and light mode. Uh, so that's that action tint color. And I think there's an action text color too. And that will also be label. So go ahead and hit command R to build and run. I'll hit this, and now our action sheet looks a lot like what YouTube's action sheet looks like. We've got the system uh, themed background, title color, subtitle is like a little bit lighter because it's secondary we've made it, and then we have white for uh, the icons and the action label text. So now you can, you can assign any color you want uh, is the point, but dark mode obviously people like to support and it's pretty expected by users these days. So uh, it's definitely important that it doesn't look obnoxious like this. So you can actually apply all of this stuff on the alert as well. So let's see if memory serves and I can do it. I think the properties are pretty similar actually. So you're gonna have a title text color, title color rather. And let's see, I think there's a message color. This one should be secondary label. Well, it doesn't have to be secondary label, but I'm gonna make it secondary label. And I think there should be an action color. Let's close my antivirus pop-up. Uh, let's see, there's action. Should be another color on here. Let's see, there's title color, the shadow color, there's Scrim color, message color, background color, uh, button ink color. I think we want button title color. And I, I actually like this being like blue. Uh, it makes it pop a little bit more. So you can leave it the standard or make it link. And now when we hit this, we'll get this. And this is exactly almost verbatim what Google's pop-ups look like. And let's say you wanted the logout to be red. You can do that as well just to indicate that it's uh, I guess a destructive action, as Apple calls it, something that the user should, should just be careful about tapping. And uh, let's actually run this on iPad and see what it looks like on iPad as well. So I'm going to close that app crash, obviously, because we closed the simulator. So let's go ahead and let's pick the iPad 7th gen. Go ahead and hit run over there. And just to show you guys what things look like. So the action sheet on iPad looks a little interesting if our simulator decides to not be slow and load. And while it's doing that, actually, um, let me switch this to dark mode. While it's doing that, you can come through this list and you'll realize it's pretty extensive. We got dialogues, feature highlights, flexible headers, um, library info list. There's The list just kind of goes on and on. Uh, progress indicators are actually pretty nifty. Uh, ripple effects. So I actually like the circular progress indicator that they have. It looks like they don't have a preview here. Oh, actually they do. So there's a there's a bunch of other libraries that can handle this, like Progress HUD is very popular, but it's nice to be able to get all your components from Google. But now that this has booted, we can hit this and we see the action sheet is similar to how, again, Google does it. Whereas if you did it on, uh, use a normal Apple action sheet, it would be kind of a pop-up with like a pointer. So you can customize everything the way you want, uh, but this is a great resource that I figured I would share with all of you. So that is all I had. I'm going to end this video before my fan decides to be obnoxiously loud. If you haven't hit that like button already, make sure to do so for the YouTube algorithm. Helps out the videos quite a bit. Helps me make more content for all of you. If you're new to the channel, hit subscribe while you're at it. If you have any comments, suggestions, feedback, etc., etc., don't hesitate to leave it down below. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.